Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. Today we're looking at the Dragonfly Cobalt from AudioQuest, which is a USB DAC designed to work seamlessly and, and driverlessly with smartphones, laptops and PCs. It's an upgrade and a new version of the previous Dragonfly Red DAC, which is still available. And uh, for about $100 to $150 more than the Red, it was really interesting to me to see how much they could actually improve on what was already a great product. So let's take a look. So to start things off, let's just talk about what the Dragonflies are all about. For those not familiar with the range, they are a USB DAC, they have a USB-A plug there that provides a headphone output with variable digital volume control and also can be maxed with the volume to make them a line out for an external amplifier. Add to that the fact that they're also MQA certified, which means that they can do one stage of unpacking of an MQA signal through a service like Tidal and you've got yourself a really powerful and versatile little USB DAC. The Dragonfly Red for some time now has been my go-to portable DAC. I love it and I think it sounds great. So I was really interested to see how much of an improvement the Cobalt had brought. Let's just talk about design briefly at the beginning. So you can see straight away with them sitting here in front of me that the Cobalt is actually smaller than the Red. So it's got some new parts in it. It's got the newest Sabre chip. It's got a new um, controller chip in there as well, which is how it manages all of the volume control and the interface with the USB. So it's actually got better, newer parts and it's smaller. So in all ways, it's, it's an improvement. The other thing that's really different about it is that it comes now with what they call the Dragon Tail. And the Dragon Tail is a USB-C to a USB-A female. And what that means is that you can very quickly and easily connect a Dragonfly to your phone. So just plug that into the bottom of your phone and you've got your headphone socket there. And it's simple to say that it sounds better than any of the dongles that you're going to get in the box with an Apple or a Google phone. So it's a little bit bigger than those dongles, but it is absolutely a fantastic improvement on those. And I'll talk about how much of an improvement in just a moment. So just a moment ago, I talked about MQA. For those that aren't familiar with MQA, let me give you a quick rundown. So MQA stands for Mastering Quality Audio. And the idea is it's technology that was developed to help compress music into a smaller size file without losing any quality. So it's a lossless compression format, if you like. So the way that works and where it most often is seen is in a service like Tidal, where it's a streaming service, is that Tidal will send you an MQA file. As that file arrives within the software, what the software is able to do is actually unpack that compressed file and bring it back to the quality of a, say, CD quality lossless FLAC file. The next step in the process is for a DAC like a Dragonfly to do what they call rendering, and that's essentially another unfold of the package. At that stage, what you're starting to get is a high res file, let's say a 96 kilohertz 24 bit file from something that arrived to you in the size of a small FLAC file or a large MP3 file. There is one final stage available, which is what they call decoding. Now decoding is where the, the MQA software and technology interfaces with the DAC, recognizes the DAC, and basically does a custom reconstruction of the audio signal based on what it knows about the DAC. So what that means when we're talking about MQA in relation to the Dragonfly is that the Dragonfly gives you the second level of unpacking. It doesn't give you all three levels of unpacking. In my experience, the third level is not that commonly available. Um, there are a number of albums, quite a number of albums on Tidal, but it's not like it's the standard fare. So you're going to be getting, I would say 80% of the benefits of MQA from something like the Dragonfly, even though it doesn't do that final decode. I should also mention that I know some people are not a fan of MQA and that's fine, that's a whole different conversation. The benefit of it for the sake of this conversation is that the Dragonflies are able to give you better quality sound with smaller files from a streaming service like Tidal. That's really the most important thing to know. As far as I know, they're also the smaller stack that's going to provide you that quality using the MQA rendering process. So let's talk a bit about compatibility. The Dragonfly is a driverless DAC, and in order to keep it driverless, it's capped at a 96 kilohertz maximum sample rate. 
So you're not going to get DSD out of this, but you are absolutely going to enjoy high-res audio from it. Another part of its magic is its ability to provide perfect volume control from zero all the way to 100% volume. And the way that's done is through the controller chip that's in there. And this is not new to the Cobalt, this was in the red as well. What it means is that if you're listening to a sensitive pair of IEMs, like say the Campfire Audio Andromeders, you can listen to them on the Cobalt with no, no significant background noise. There may be the tiniest little bit of hiss, but the second there's any music there, you're not gonna hear it. The point being though, you can have the volume at 2% or 4% or 6% right down low, where you're still gonna be able to enjoy perfect channel balance, you're not losing any sound quality because it's all done digitally, and so you can enjoy the most sensitive of earphones using the Dragonfly Cobalt. At the other end of the scale, it can drive much more power-hungry headphones. So full-size headphones like the Focal Clears, some of the Meta Audio headphones that I've got around, it will drive those very, very comfortably. It's maybe not gonna get the absolute maximum performance out of some difficult headphones compared to say a desktop amplifier, but it's going to give you sufficient volume and it's going to give good quality for a portable solution. The final trick though with the USB controller is that it allows you to max the volume to 100% and essentially turn the Cobalt into a dedicated DAC, meaning that now the headphone jack becomes a line out that you can feed to an external amplifier to drive those much more difficult headphones, like say a pair of HD 800s from Sennheiser or a pair of Bayer Dynamic T1s. This can become your DAC, pair it up with an external amp, be it a portable amp or a desktop amp, and you've got yourself a really great system. Of course, none of this matters if the sound isn't fantastic. I've already mentioned that the Cobalt is an upgrade on the Dragonfly Red. It's not a replacement so much as a new tier, and therefore the sound has to be improved. The Dragonfly Red, for those that haven't listened to it before, is a great sounding DAC. It's got a little bit of dryness to it, the soundstage is also a little bit intimate, so the sounds are quite close to you and they're also not particularly well spaced out. The soundstage is, is relatively small. It's, it's fairly precise in the soundstage, but not spacious in the soundstage, if that makes sense. When I first listened to the Cobalt, what really struck me was that with the new chips that they've used and any new filtering that they've added in there, the end result is a sound that is a little bit more mellow, but not thick. So what I mean there is that the sound is now smoother and cleaner and it's also more spacious. And what that results in is a more natural and more enjoyable presentation that actually allows you to hear more details. And that may sound funny because the, the treble, if anything, has been pulled back slightly, but in doing so, it's allowed each sound to stand on its own and the overall sound stage to feel more spacious. So for me, it's just hands down a better sound quality. The red's great, the blue is just, or the cobalt I should say, is just better. Interestingly, I used to carry around the Meridian Explorer 2 as my sort of semi-portable DAC. I wouldn't use it with a smartphone, but if I was in the office with a laptop, I'd plug in the Meridian Explorer. So for me, the test of the cobalt was could it not only knock off the red, but also replace the Explorer and therefore have me carrying one device instead of two? And the simple answer is absolutely it can. So to put things into perspective, the Explorer provided a slightly thinner sound than the red, but it also provided a better sense of space and detail than the red. What I'm now getting with the Cobalt is I'm getting the same sense of space, if not a little bit better, but also a better sense of weight. There's better bass out of the Cobalt and the smoother sound is actually more enjoyable to listen to than this also slightly cool and slightly treble oriented Meridian Explorer. I think the best way I can describe it is that everything from the Cobalt sounds more realistic and it sounds better driven. And what I mean by that is when I listen to the Red and I listen to the Explorer, what I found was that both of them, I remembered I was listening to a recording. It was a very well produced and, and or reproduced recording but it was still definitely a recording. The moment I changed over to the Cobalt, it was more like I was in the room with the music being played live. I mentioned before that there was extra bass from the Cobalt compared to the, definitely the Explorer and to a certain degree than the Red. And I wanted to clarify that as well as part of that sense of everything being more natural, the bass hasn't been enhanced or boosted in any way. What it seems like is it's actually just better, better reproduced and better driven. And to put that in another way, what that means is that each bass note has presence. 
it has impact, definitely in a way that the Explorer lacked and to a degree in a way that the Red lacked or at least in a way that you couldn't hear because the treble had that little bit of dryness and the whole sound stage was a bit more compressed. So the Cobalt is not enhancing anything. It's still a very neutral, natural presentation. It's just doing it all better. It's putting everything into better balance. It's making it all more coherent. And the end result is just a beautiful, smooth, natural and realistic presentation. So the end result here is that the Dragonfly Cobalt is an upgrade over every portable DAC. And I mean truly portable DACs. I'm not talking about things like an iFi IDSD. I'm not comparing those, they're in a different category. But for truly portable DACs, the Cobalt is easily the king of anything I've ever listened to. So if we think about the pricing, the Dragonfly Red retails for around about 200 US, the Dragonfly Cobalt for around about 300 US. So you're spending about $100 more US. If you're here in Australia, it translates to about 150 or so to get what in my mind is a clear upgrade in sound quality. It's smaller, it also comes with the dragon tail that the red never came with. So in all ways, the Cobalt is just a better product. And as I mentioned before, I believe it hands down beats any other truly portable DAC that I've ever listened to. It's, it's just perfect in that regard. I specify portable DAC because I have stacked it up against some desktop DACs, even things that cost a little bit less like the Topping D50S. And I have to say it doesn't quite stack up against those but nor should it when it's, when it's this size. Um, the versatility and the size and the performance that it provides, I think it's absolutely worthwhile. I just wouldn't recommend it perhaps as a replacement for a desktop DAC. It's a different purpose that it's being used for. So if you're in the market for a DAC and 300 US dollars is within your budget, absolutely hands down, you should be looking at the Dragonfly Cobalt. It's a fantastic product. There is nothing I can say that's bad about it, honestly. If that is something that you're interested in, do remember that I always place affiliate links in the comments where possible. If you click through those, it really helps to support the channel. And speaking of supporting the channel, we're about to set up a Patreon page and on that page is gonna be something that I think you might find really interesting. What I'm looking to do is have patrons of the page be able to join a list and have products sent around to you for a couple of weeks to play with, try out, and then send it on to other viewers and patrons of the channel. I'll be putting up information soon, so if you're not already subscribed and that's of interest to you, hit the subscribe button and stay tuned for more information in future videos. Until those future videos though, happy listening, and we'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound. Music